<laughs> well, uh, let's, let's be really clear on something uh, to all of you in this room. There's one rule that I live by. You do not stand for me, I stand for you. <laughs> I'm not, I am not elected to be served, I'm elected to serve. And I'm going to continue to do that as long as I'm in public service. And I want to thank you to my good friend, uh, Jay Jacobs. Uh, thank you for what you have done and what you are continuing to do for this great party. Uh, your staff for the work that you do every day to advance the goals of New Yorkers. It is a privilege to be here today with my fellow Democrats and the great leaders of the state. I was laughing behind stage with my good friend, uh, Majority Lead Leader Andrew, Andrew Stewart Cousins on how far we come. This is a Drake moment. Started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> And to Secretary Clinton, Governor Hochul, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, Attorney General Letitia James, Controller DiNapoli, and all of our state and federal elected officials and officers, I thank you and New York thanks you for your commitment and service on behalf of the people of this state who so badly need a government that gets stuff done. And let's not forget the mayors. I know my mayors are out there because we're always asking you for money. <laughs> and at a time of immense challenges, it gives me immense hope to hear all of your ideas, see your energy, and feel your enthusiasm for the future. Today, I want to talk about the bright future, but also want to acknowledge our precarious present. Because if we are going to attend and to lead this state, we cannot just talk about grand plans for where we be, will be years for, from today. We must also address the problem New Yorkers expect us to solve right now. Right now. Let us start by agreeing on one true thing. Democrats are the party of the possible. We say no to the status quo. We fix broken systems. We take action when broken people and marginalized communities suffer injustice. Let us also be honest, though, because family must be honest with each other. We may agree that action must be taken, but we may not always agree on what action to take. Our arguments are often not about whether or not to do something. They're about how to do something. Often we are so impatient for change that we sometimes direct our passion at each other. And that is why we join together today. We join together today to choose a common course. In June and in November, New Yorkers will tell us who they want to represent them. So today, we must make it our goal to tell New Yorkers what plans and priorities the Democrats on their ballots will represent. I also believe strongly that we must make it our goal to represent the respect and respect the entirety of our party when we choose our direction, because that is what New Yorkers want. Some say our party is weakened by its diversity, that holding up such a big tent requires too many arms raised in the same direction. I say no to that. It is our strength, because when we act together, when we act on behalf of all New Yorkers, and we do so and win. So, I feel and you feel that we all must pull our party in this direction or that direction is the wrong direction to think about coming together because we believe we can unite. And I say no to those who believe we cannot unite because we can. The people, the working people are our North Star. The prior, their priorities must be our priorities. And following their lead is our responsibility. It is the right thing to do. And that is why I am so proud that this party has earned their trust with our candidates elected to every major statewide office. They asked us to prioritize their problems, and we have. We fought and won fights for working people again and again. We won fights for higher wages, for a stronger social safety net, 
for human rights, and for a fairer economy. And that is exactly why New York has elected us to lead the Senate, the Assembly, and the Executive Office. That's the right way to do it, New Yorkers. But now we continue to fight those entrenched issues while we are grappling with new challenges. And as we make our agenda here today, as we choose our direction, we must listen again to the New Yorkers who put us here. I think what they are telling us is loud and clear. They're saying we no longer want to be controlled by crises. They're asking us to find a way out of this pandemic prison, away from crime, COVID, and economic uncertainty. They are demanding that we put forward immediate solutions, not just long-term investments. And to do that, we do not need to choose between winners and losers in our economy or points on the ideological spectrum. We do not need to choose between safety and justice. That's the prerequisite to our prosperity of being safe in a just way. If we believe that we are the party, party of the possible, then there's not need, no need to be any fights between us, only the fights in front of us. So we must tackle public safety head on. That means resources for both law enforcement and community-based anti-violent work. It means going after guns and support for programs that address the root causes of crime. And it means we must create a stronger safety net for those who are struggling. The flow of funds that were keeping vulnerable New Yorkers afloat is dying up. It's drying up every day. We must now fill the well with funding that provides immediate help, such as the expansion of the Earned Income Tax Credit. It has not increased over 20 years. It's time to put more money in the pockets of everyday New Yorkers. And we must get people back to work. New Yorkers, it's time to get back to work. You can't tell me you're afraid of COVID on Monday and I see you in a nightclub on Sunday. <laughs> that accountant that's not in his office space is not going to the cleaners. It's not going to the restaurant. It's not allowing the cooks, the waiters, the dishwashers. It's time to open our state and our city and show the country the resiliency of who we are. Many communities are still facing sky-high unemployment numbers. We must give them the tools to return to work, including a massive expansion of skills and job, job training programs. We must provide universal child care through increased subsidies and take creative approaches to create more seats for our children, such as tax breaks for building owners and employers who provide free or reduced child care space. You all know my story. I faced a lot of challenges New Yorkers are facing right now as, young, as a young man. I was raised in a blue collar family, in a blue collar neighborhood, in a blue collar town. And I know many of you were too. Whether it was from Queens, Buffalo, Rochester, or Elmira, blue collars are running the state and it's time for blue collar sol solutions to resolve our problems. Where I grew up, it was more, much more important than something got done rather than who did it or how. That is where New Yorkers are at right now. They want leaders who would get stuff done. And this party knows what they want and how to deliver. All we need to do now is to join together to make it happen. I'm confident New Yorkers has given us a destination. Now we must show that the path by combining our energy with our diverse experiences to create the safer, fairer, more prosperous New York that New Yorkers want and deserve. We are the party of the possible, and we are the party of the people. And we will continue to lead this state through the challenges of today to the promises of tomorrow and the possibilities of the future. I believe in this city. I believe in this state. I wore a bulletproof vest for 22 years and protected the children and families of this city. It doesn't matter the color of the uniform or the color of the suit. This is our state and our city. Let's win it. 
Let's control it. Let's develop it. And let's build a stronger, equitable state for the state of New York. Thank you very much. <laughs>